Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it. And welcome back to Planet Zoo. Today we are working on our second habitat of the Aquatic DLC. We are going to be making a giant river otter habitat and lightly inspired, at least a little bit, on my recent trip to the Houston Zoo. Uh, they just opened their brand new Pantanal exhibit oh, back in October. October, I think. Yeah, back in October. And I took a tour of it with my children. You can take a look at that video if you're interested in what that looks like. And, uh, but we're going to try and make ourselves maybe a bit more um, lush, <laughs> a bit more lush uh, of an environment for our uh, giant river otters. So uh, sit back and relax and enjoy as we get this build underway. Okay, so this took me way longer than you'd think it was. Part of the reason this video took so long to come out is because uh, it took me an hour and a half to dig a hole. <laughs> and I didn't even use this hole. Uh, the whole way water works, and if you take water out and move to rain and then try to put water back in, the barriers really don't like it. Big shout out to Beyond Drew TV for giving me some tips that he knew to help with that. That really saved, uh, saved my bacon when it came to making this habitat and not getting so frustrated as uh, to quit. So yeah, Beyond Drew's awesome. If you aren't subscribed to him, you really should be. Check him out. He does a bunch of awesome zoo stuff and is now streaming regularly. Anyway, we have here our otter habitat, or at least the skeletal structure of our otter habitat. This is what we're going to be going with. We do have a very deep pool here, so very deep, and we have an archer in the water too. Uh, the pool is so very deep so that we get the deep diving mechanism. Rudy Renkamel, as I'm sure most of you are aware of, uh, I'm sure you're aware of him, he did a great video on how to get diving to work and as well as how to hide uh, some stuff. We could do it so that we had it all two meters throughout, but I'm all right with this large deep portion. I I'm okay with it. So anyway, we've got that going on. We've got where our above ground area is going to be. It's a little snug, um, but you know what? I, we're gonna go for a. We're gonna kind of turn welfare off and just make something that feels a bit more zoo-like. Because a lot of times the requirements in Planet Zoo for the animals, what they, uh, the welfare for the animals, is a little out of balance from what you re really see in a zoo. Obviously, the terrain is not correct. None of that. But look what I'm doing here with the rocks. Saw this from Iben in his uh, episode of Thom, I can't, I don't know how to say his zoo, but the episode he posted of, of the aquatic pack where he did his otter exhibit, he painted the new rock set, the, uh, a bluish greenish color. I went a little darker than he did, and he recommended using this temple piece from the um, South America DLC to create your bottom of your floor of your tank, and you get this nice blue look, which feels so super artificial. It's hard to see yet, but but you'll, one, once it's all in, I, I think you're all going to agree that it looks really, really good. Makes it feel, it gives the water this blue hue, which feels so much more zoo and artificial, which is something I'm, I'm, I'm into. So, yeah, just right now, obviously the animals are not happy. We have bare minimum here. Just trying to figure out sizing. I figured to put the animals in earlier than I did for the seal habitat. So animals are in basic skeletal structure of the layout complete. Uh, time to start uh, fine tuning, we'll say. So we've got the beginnings of some detail here, working on some rock work. I think the pool is all but finished at this point, except for some parts along the edge here. But now you can see with the blue, obviously we're not completely done, but you can see how much of a difference this makes, and especially from up above, how blue the water looks now, which I think is so cool. Did some terrain painting here. Um, at the Houston Zoo, there's a lot of sand for them to run around in, but there is also grass and big areas with lots of plantings. So we are going to be going ahead and doing that. Here they are splashing around like goobers. It is so cool. It is, again, the animations and the sound are great. I'd actually like these guys to be even louder. They are, uh, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty reserved <laughs> compared to the otters that I saw at the zoo. So, but anyway, uh, still just kind of trucking along and paying, you know, using this awesome rock set here to really kind of get the vibe. We're going to try 
and make this feel uh, realistically artificial, we'll say. Using the mangroves here to kind of blend the, 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 the habitat with the viewing area here. You know, trying to make it feel like you are in their world as opposed to they're in a zoo. So hopefully as we progress, we'll, we'll get more of that vibe here. So we're going to be making a very simple staff area here just to kind of cover it up to make it look not like butt. Yeah. So yeah, just just this is pretty much at this point we'll we'll still do some changes to the habitat as far as dimensions go, but it's all about detailing, hitting that realistic vibe. So let's see how well we can uh, tackle that. Okay, so some really big changes in this update. First and foremost, we gave them some hard shelter. I was contemplating for a while whether or not I was gonna make it indoors. I decided to not do that, and I decided to make, give them a little den here to hide in. The cool thing about this is the hitbox is actually fairly small. I'm really surprised. I can get it really small, and the otters will still be able, be able to use it, which is super cool. Like, I love that. You can barely see it. It doesn't stick out nearly as much as some of the other animals, so I don't know if they've done something to hitboxes. Uh, I know Rubel Trillions in his first episode when he was dealing with seals mentioned that their hitbox is huge, but um, yeah. So we're working over here on some really simple pimpy waterfalls here. I didn't want large waterfalls. I just wanted smaller ones, so I actually took a jet and it's not a waterfall it's a jet and i've seen mike sheets do this you just kind of push it up against the rock and it kind of looks like a waterfall and we'll, we'll dress it up a little bit put some more plantings in, kind of hide it a little bit to make it look a little more realistic and then we've got this little pool here i probably could have used the cascading waterfalls here but i just used this simple technique where you take the um, particle effects flip them upside down so it looks like there's water in here even though there really isn't with the thought that it is falling into their pool, added these cute little, um, these uh, habitat um, enrichment items and started throwing down some logs and some sticks and some branches. I had an idea to use the new artificial logs or artificial tree branches, but they're kind of hard to work with their shape and their size and like nesting them and getting them to look right was kind of a struggle, uh, a bit more than, well, he just put the, <laughs> he just tossed the uh, the ball in there. Oops. A bit more of a struggle than I was um, anticipating. We have some nice broken trees here that work really well. The problem is it really does cut down on the amount that they can travel through the habitat, but eh. Uh, you'll also notice we threw down this fake log here. Well, we're going to call it a fake log. And starting to put in some more ferns and, and shrubs and plants to really kind of sell this natural vibe. We're also starting the back wall here. Uh, trying to make it so that clearly they could not get out. If you look, a lot of it has kind of a uh, an, an angle to it so that they wouldn't be able to climb out. I hear that these guys are really hard to keep. They, they are um, escape artists, so we're going to try to make sure that it looks like there's no way they can go anywhere. And I have found a new favorite plant, this um, rhubarb plant. The giant rhubarb is awesome. I love it. And this lipstick palm is super cool. I am having an issue. No matter what plants I put in the habitat, um, it's not registering registering as appropriate for the species, no matter what. And I'm using the right ones. I'm using South America, aquatic, tropical. Um, it doesn't say, you know, like when, uh, if you're familiar, when you put the plants in, it talks about, it'll have the red exclamation point icon if the plant is wrong for the animal. I don't get that in the list of things in the habitat, but the bar for, uh, for their uh, foliage never increases. It's always in the red. So that was really hurting my... Um, I was really hurting my welfare, and at this point, I turned welfare off, said screw it, and now I'm using any tropical plant I want to, to make it look the way I want, and uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> I'm a little stuck here on what to do with this area. I did a little bit raised platform because I kind of wanted the people to be able to see a little bit above the water. I didn't want it to be a completely underwater habitat. Uh, the problem is it, it moves in one meter increments, so it was a little hard to get it at the level I wanted. This is a little higher than I think I originally anticipated, but you know what? I will I will take it, so it's no big deal. But yeah, this is the direction we're headed. We're going to add lots of big plants around the habitat to really make it set in to its environment. Right now it's still looking a little sparse and a little bit out of place.
You could see exactly what I meant when I said like set in place. Now that we've got these larger trees behind the enclosure, it really makes it feel uh, built in. It makes it feel like it belongs here now. It sells this idea of a river valley a little bit better, you know. I, I mean, it's still, I still want it to look like it's man-made, but I want it to look like it's nice. I don't want it to be stark. I want the covering, the plant covers. I, I like it. I like it a lot, and hopefully you're... You're also thinking it looks pretty okay. So uh, at this point, we're pretty much done with the interior of the habitat. I, I think this is about where we leave it. We might do a little bit more with the terrain paint, but um, I mean, I've got everything underground done. I did put a feeder in underwater. Uh, I used uh, later on, oh, I got them now. I've got some of the new decal vents here and I put in the smallest bubble particle effect so that these vents bubble just a teeny weeny bit, which I think is super cool. I think that adds a lot. And here they come. Let's watch them eat. Animations are great. Oh, I am still having boxing issues, less than I was with the seals, uh, but still having boxing issues. And I am having an issue where <laughs> otters will just phase through habitat walls and run away, which is a big, big issue. Um, every every few minutes I have to go and capture the animal, but whatever we're playing on sandbox It really doesn't make a difference to me one way or the other so but yeah We're we're coming right along here now. It's time to dress up the part that the guests encounter Do some stuff in here and you can see I've started just barely working on getting this covered up So that's next on the to-do list and now we have the uh, keeper area finished off. Very simple, very bare bones, but you know what? I wanted it to be mostly hidden anyway, so I'm all right with that. We're letting the foliage do the job here of detailing, and we just have a very simple bamboo and thatch roof building. In the back here, it's super bare. I um, don't care. <laughs> we have the door here. Shout out to Ruble Trillions for this idea because a lot of times in zoos, their doors are made of the same material as the wall that they're set in, which is pretty cool. But I think it looks pretty realistic. I really do like this uh, idea that there's some windows here, that this is actually this rock work is connected to the building. These fake rocks are, are by far the superstars of this pack, I think. I think they do such a great job of um, being able to outline a man-made body of water and then you can theoretically put your terrain behind it uh, Feels like something we weren't really able to do with the rock sets that we had previously So that's that's something I'm really happy about But yeah, not much in this little chunk here to, to talk about other than that the keeper area is all completed and the last chunk is going to be well, filling in all this getting this all greened up and ready for guests Okay, so what I like, yeah, if you've been watching me for a while with these DLCs, what I kind of like to do is make these own little, like, tiny little sub areas. Uh, sometimes we have extra animals, sometimes we don't, but I do sometimes like to include a sign. I know I didn't for the uh, seals, but I did for the otters here, and we're not calling it otter anything. Amazon River Trail, simple, straightforward, cliche, whatevs. Uh, but this is using the new 2D font, and that's super cool, and we have a second 2D font, which is great. So I'm going to just start. We did let guests in. Uh, the path continues that way towards nothingness. Let's not look over there. Instead, let's look this way. So happy with how this all turned out. So as you enter, all we really have are otters, and then over there we have notters. <laughs> I just wanted to give another path. I thought if people didn't really want to skip, if they wanted to skip the otters, theoretically this is just one exhibit in a much larger Amazon River exhibit. Um, so we have our otters, then we have not otters that way. I don't know. I couldn't help myself. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very pleased with myself. This might be the best thing I've ever done in the game. This little sign here. <laughs> Hopefully you agree. In fact, my wife said that this should be the thumbnail. I, I don't think so. <laughs> Nonetheless, let's take a look at what we got. You're going to see lots of benches and uh, paths and uh, benches and bins around. But we're going to take a nice slow walk through here. And the first thing we have here, I should, probably should rotate this sign a little bit, is otterly adapted, huh? An info board about how otters are perfectly adapted for their semi-aquatic lifestyle. So love the new, I always love the new animal signs. And again, this 2D font, super cool. I did copy and then slightly offset it to get this kind of 3D, <laughs> using 2D font to get a 3D look, but just that drop shadow kind of thing going on. 
I think that looks pretty nice. So as we take this little raised area up, theoretically, I mean, kids would be able to climb on the rocks and you can get right up to the rocks just like this. And as you can see, we have our otters. What is that? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was crazy. He was swimming above the water. But you can see here how this looks from guest view. I'm really happy with it. I love it. I, oh, there goes. Oh, he's going to jump in. Push. There he goes. I think it's really cool. And hopefully you're ha you think it looks good too. Um, it's really simple. I mean, there's really not a lot to it. But I do think that it turned out really, really well. I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, there's not much else to say. I've already talked a lot about it. So I'm just going to give you some sweeping views here. As we come down this way, you get just a little bit of look at the at the, the keeper area, uh, but you can still see the waterfall. But you see what I mean when I mention like having it on a ridge here. The water is pretty high. Up oh, here they come. The water is pretty high here, uh, so I like. I'm glad that I decided to do that and give a little bit of a boost for people to see over the water. We have another sign here, family matters, why family groups are so important to Giant River, talking about the social structure and the bonded pairs and all that stuff. So, And then if we were to swing around this way, it's just the, it ends really quickly. And same with up here, there's not much to see here other than just some foliage and stuff. Not a huge area, not a huge build, just a little something something, but a lot of care, I think, I'm gonna get out of this view, a lot of care was taken to show off um, a more realistic habitat uh, size-wise than the seals. This feels a lot more realistic. Um, this is still pretty big. This one I think is a lot bigger. At least it looks a lot bigger than the one that uh, I seen in real life at the Houston Zoo. And that's brand new and it's awesome. I did consider trying to incorporate a slide. Uh, if I do another otter habitat, I will have to incorporate a slide. Um, <laughs> it is so cute to watch them. And again, if you didn't check out the Houston Zoo video, I highly rec on my channel, I hi highly recommend you do. You can see the otters using their little slide in their new habitat. So, But anyway, um, that's going to do it for this episode of Planet Zoo. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, hit the like button. And if you aren't already, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the other Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, and other content here on the channel. With all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Planet Zoo. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.